400 years ago, the Mayflower would have been at sea, sailing from this incredible departure point, Plymouth, and heading out across the Atlantic. It wouldn't have been quite as calm as it is today. Uh, beautiful as it is in October, she obviously faced some horrendous conditions, very bad storms, so much so that you know, they have to drop the sails and at times just drift along. The Mayflower left Dartmouth with the Speedwell. They sailed along the south coast to, uh, to Land's End. It was pretty apparent the Speedwell was not going to make it. She was taking on water. And so they came back to Plymouth and then transferred all of the crew onto the Mayflower itself. And then she set off across the Atlantic. Now the Mayflower was skippered by Christopher Jones, who um, hadn't really got a lot of experience in terms of sailing with, with humans and pass as passengers. Uh, most of his trade had been carrying wine back from, uh, from other countries like Portugal and Spain and France. Uh, he had never crossed the Atlantic. Um, and you know, I think back to my first time I crossed the Atlantic, uh, I was almost overwhelmed with an anxiety about you know, being you know, at that time alone at sea, uh, never mind with a, with a crew of inexperienced people. I, I'm sure um, he would have had very, some real anxious moments in the days leading up to the voyage uh, about whether he could actually command that boat uh, across that, that, that treacherous bit of water. During one of the nights, a ferocious storm whipped up and one of the crew members, John Howland, was washed over the side. I can only imagine what it was like, the terror going through his mind, you know, thinking he's never going to get picked up again. They managed to get back to him and pulled him out of the water, which is remarkable. I mean, I've actually had a man overboard in the middle of the Atlantic where someone was tethered to the boat. And at that time, you know, I didn't think we'd get him back over the side. One can only imagine what they must have been thinking alone in a big storm, middle of the Atlantic, thinking, what on earth have I done? Have I done the right thing? You know, is America going to be the right place to go? We sort of take it for granted now because boats cross the Atlantic all the time and there's so much shipping moving around the world. Uh, but, but of course, back then, the equipment that they had on board to, to navigate was so basic. It was before Harrison had invented the chronometer, so they, were, they had no watch, difficult, almost impossible to work out their longitude. They would have had, I suspect, a backstaff on the boat for, for, for taking positions and bearings, and maybe they just set off on a single line of latitude with a noon sight and, and sailed across the Atlantic, just holding this, this, this bearing. And of course, you're trying to land in a particular part of, of the US. It's not easy to do that. When they, when they arrived on the other side of the pond, they, uh, they were making for, for Cape Cod, but they actually ended up um, quite far south of Cape Cod um, and then had this really difficult time to try and get back up around Cape Cod itself. So we do know a little bit about what it would have been like to, to do that voyage because they recreated the voyage in the 50s uh, with the Mayflower 2 and she was built in Brixham. Uh, the shipwrights built her in the same sort of traditional way that they would have built the Mayflower. They used the same tools and equipment to, to build her uh, and then recreated this voyage uh, and that gave them a real sense of, of what the, the, the North Atlantic entailed. They, they went a slightly different route from what I understand. So the, the, the Mayflower 2 actually went quite a lot further south, south of Baltimore up towards Cape Cod. Um, we don't really know what Christopher Jones, what route he took. Most of the literature points to the fact that he went straight across the Atlantic. My suspicion is he probably went quite a long way north. The further north you go, the shorter the distance, uh, but also there's a chance he would have gone on the other side of these, these big storms, these big depressions, uh, and had some favourable winds. The challenge of going a long way north is he would have been in ice territory, uh, and of course the conditions on board would have been horrendous. So this boat's got an incredible story as well. It's a replica of, of Captain Bly's original uh, Bounty's launch that he was cast adrift um, after the mutiny on the Bounty. Bly was a Plymouthian. Uh, he grew up here and went to school here. Many of his voyages, including his big voyage with Captain Cook, set sail from Plymouth. 
She's been with me for about four years now. Uh, I bought her off Channel 4 after we filmed Mutiny, the series. Um, we recreated Bly's voyage, nine of us on board this boat for 60 days under the same conditions, the same rations, uh, to see if we could survive the same ordeal that he went through. This year, we planned to take 450 kids from the Plymouth schools out on uh, a whole series of traditional boats that was postponed until the spring of next year, uh, when we're gonna, you know, not recreate the voyage because we're not going across the Atlantic, but we're gonna give 400 young people the chance to experience these lovely traditional boats and perhaps a little taste of what it's like to be on the ocean. In terms of length of time, both voyages are very similar. Bly, Bly was at, at sea for 45 days, we were at, at sea for 60 days. I think the Mayflower was, from memory, about 67, 68 days. In terms of hardship, I think it would have been very similar. They, they would have been on rations. Um, for most of the time, they would have probably been kept below decks because it would have been too dangerous up on deck. That would have been different from us because we were obviously in the elements the whole time with the waves and the wind and the sun just crashing over the boat. Uh, but by all accounts, Mayflower leaked like a sieve, so, um, so it would have been horrendous. And of course, there was quite a few of them on board, so they're cramped into a small boat like that. The conditions would have been very, very tough. I can only imagine what it would have been really been like. The other thing was it was going into our autumn, our winter time. Uh, around that time, 400 years ago, we were in a mini ice age, so conditions were, would have been horrendous in the North Atlantic. Having arrived in America, Christopher Jones and some of his crew decided that America really wasn't for them, they wanted to get back to, to, to Europe. Uh, he set sail, some of his crew had perished during the winter storms there, so he left without his gunners, without his boatswain, without his cook and, uh, and many of his crew. Uh, but the return crossing was, was remarkable. I mean, he crossed in half the time. Uh, and that was because, you know, we, we get these westerly winds that carry you know, these great systems, great depressions across the Atlantic. And he would have picked up some of these big storms and really just roared across the Atlantic in half the time. Jones died a year later after he returned from the voyage. He's remembered with a memorial in his hometown of Rotherhide, where the Mayflower originally set sail.